Today we're going to study nonlinear regression. So open up your study guides to the nonlinear regression notes. Now when do we use nonlinear models? When bivariate data has a nonlinear pattern, it is best to use regression models that are nonlinear. Sometimes it's difficult to determine whether data is nonlinear by just looking at the scatter plot. Remember, our best indication for using a nonlinear model is when we have an obvious pattern in the residual plot. If the residual plot has a pattern, we can begin to think about different ways to model our data. And recall, in our studies of residual plots, when our residual plots were randomly scattered, then the data was linear. If there was an apparent pattern in a residual plot, however, our data should not be modeled in a linear fashion. We should consider different ways to model the data. And we're going to consider five nonlinear transformations used in regression. Now these aren't the only five transformation methods we can use, but they're five of the most common nonlinear transformations used when working with data that is nonlinear and building a model for it. Now here are the five nonlinear regression models. The table below represents five nonlinear regression models we can use in the transformation of our bivariate data. Our goal is to achieve a linear relationship between the newly transformed variables. The first one is a logarithmic transformation. We're going to take our original xy values and transform them into log x versus log y values. When we do that, our linear regression equation will now be transformed into y hat equals a plus b times the log of x. Our predicted value y hat once again is a plus b times log of x. Now an exponential model will take our original xy variables and transform them into x versus log y we will have the following regression equation and predicted values. Log y hat equals a plus bx. y hat therefore is equal to 10 raised to the a plus bx power. The third type of transformation we can use is where we convert our xy values to log x versus log y values. Now our regression equation becomes log y hat is equal to a plus b times log of x and we can solve for y hat our predicted value which is equivalent to 10 raised to the a plus b times log x. The quadratic equation takes our variables x and y and converts them to x versus square root y. So the regression equation becomes square root of y hat equals a plus bx. Our predicted value when solving for y hat becomes a plus bx quantity squared. And finally, we'll talk about the reciprocal transformation where we take our variables x and y and transform them into the variable x comma 1 over y. Our regression equation becomes 1 over y hat equals a plus bx. And our predicted value y hat can be solved for by taking 1 divided by a plus bx. So these are the five nonlinear regression models that we can use in the transformation of our bivariate data. Now let's consider the following flowchart. The following flowchart can be used to transform nonlinear bivariate data. When we have bivariate data, the first thing we want to do is determine the least squares regression line of this bivariate data. We're going to ask ourselves, is the residual plot scattered? Let's take a look at a quick sketch of the residual plot and see if the residual plot is randomly scattered about zero. If it is, then we have an appropriate linear model. However, if our residual plot's not randomly scattered, we need to consider one of the five nonlinear transformations here. Now notice I put an option six because there's other models and methods that we can use to transform data. Now once we choose a transformation with a new nonlinear model, once again, we're going to determine the least squares regression line. Then we go back down through the flowchart and ask ourselves, 